Hey, Craven. Got a light? No duty tonight? No. Want to grab a beer? Sorry, right, not tonight, Johnny. You got something better? Got a date. See you in the morning, kid. COD. I have it, Craven. Saxon, there's a car outside. Saxon. Hello, Johnny. Good to see you. How are you, Warden? Fine, thank you. Just fine. We've been hearing a lot about you, Johnny. Purple Heart, Bronze Star. <laughs> you can be proud. I'm proud. Now, look, Warden, my parole said I didn't have to come back until my tour of duty was up. Now, that's another year, isn't it? You sit down, Johnny. The state didn't bring you back. The government did. What for? There was a corporal in your company named uh, Harry Craven. What do you know about him? He's dead. Shot to death by person to persons unknown, January 6, 1946. What do you know about his personal activities? I mean, how did he spend his time? I don't know. You know nothing other than the fact that he's dead. That's right. You were here in prison together, then paroled into the same outfit. You slept in the same barracks. Now, you must have we some just idea. bunked together. I didn't ask him a lot of questions. I don't know anything about him. You're not under arrest, Salvo. We need your help. What kind of help? I said I don't know anything about Harry Craven. Take a look at this bill. Well, what about it? It's the most perfectly reproduced counterfeit we've ever seen. Just a few short months after Craven's death, these bills started popping up all over Europe. What's that got to do with me? Harry Craven was formerly a counterfeiter. We feel sure that he's mixed up in this operation somewhere. We have an idea that you might help us find the others. You want me to be a treasury agent? You'll be a special employee of the Secret Service. Your army record cinches your parole, Johnny. But this is different. You've got a chance to wipe the books clean. No record, no past. If you cooperate, it means a full pardon. And most important, reinstated complete citizenship. Okay. 
What do I do? Hello, Warden. Maury. Alec. Sorry, I'm late. Okay, Mr. Conrad. Hello, Johnny. You can forget the whole deal. I uh, think I can fill in the details. We'll wait for you outside, Alec. Now, Johnny, you're looking good. All those ribbons, staff sergeant. You've done a great job. How much have they told you? I guess you didn't hear me. I said to forget it. Yes, I heard you. How much have they told you? Is this your case? I'm the agent in charge, yes. Well, then I wouldn't want anything to do with it. You're turning us down? No. No, I'm turning you down. Come on, Johnny. Does the way you feel about me make it worth going through your life with ex con marked all over you? And what are you so concerned about now? I was always concerned about Are you concern. kidding? What did I ever ask from you? Did I ever want anything from you except a little help once when I was in trouble? But that was too much for a kid to ask from his old man, wasn't it? You're my own father when you put me here, didn't what you? What kind of help do you expect? You get drunk, smash an old lady to pieces with your hot rod, and then start running? It's only a matter of time. Yeah, I forgot. You're a cop. You'd rather help them, wouldn't you? Johnny, take the deal. Clear your name. What do you care about my name? It isn't even your name anymore. My name is John Salvo, not John Conrad. It's my mother's name. You remember her? All right. Make her proud of it. Clean it up. Then you can go live like a man, where you want to and how you want to. All you have to do is stomach me for a while. Okay, you got a deal, but not because of you, it's for me. Okay, Johnny, the plane leaves in 20 minutes for Los Angeles. There's a reservation in your name at the Fontana Hotel, the address is in there. You can get close when you get to Los Angeles and we'll meet you there. Now, Johnny, I'm glad that we're going... Short Secret Service. Come on in. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. I'm sorry I wasn't at the plane. I got tied up. That's okay. Have a nice trip? Not bad. I fly only when I have to. I figure what's the hurry. You ready? What for? Go downtown. I'm your escort. Oh, where are we going? The office. We got a briefing. Staff, huh? Purple Heart. I got one too. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Bougainville. A buddy of mine shot a sniper out of a tree, landed on top of me, his gun went off and hit me in the ankle. They gave me the Purple Heart. Why not? I'm entitled to hurt just as much. That's tough. What tough? They sent me home. <laughs> you eat, yet? Yeah. Mint? Oh, no, thanks. I know, in the Marine Corps, I ate anything. Nothing bothered me. Since I came home, everything sits like a hot rock. Listen, what's this briefing all about? Come on, we'll find out when we get there. Don't talk, huh? Like a clam. Oh, good evening, Mr. Saxon. Don't get it too clean, Pop. The boys are still in here. Okay. Maury. Jim. Hi. Hi. Come on in. Be right with you. Boys already? Well, they seem to be. Well, here we go again. Did uh, Johnny get in all right? Yeah. 
Schwartz is bringing him down. You don't think much of this whole idea, do you? Huh. What do you mean? I'm talking about Johnny. Following up on Craven. It's an important lead. This case is your baby, Alec. You've been trying to bust it for a long time. You decide what's important, not me. Yeah, it has been a long time. A lot of years. Following leads, checking numbers, feeling paper. You forget there's anything else, that you got a home or a family. You can't help it, you just forget. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm still eating off a hot plate. On Monday you come home, your wife's a stranger. Your kid is just a big pair of eyes, staring at you with questions you don't know how to answer. And you find you're all alone. You're not even sure of how it happened. And then you get used to it. And that's the hardest part, when you get used to it. Yeah, he was a tough kid. His mother couldn't handle him, got into a lot of trouble. He's come a long way. He'll be a big help to us. Okay, Alec. All right. Let's go. Right in there. Okay. Hello, Johnny. Oh, yeah. Have the boys grab some seats. Okay. All right, boys, grab Come the seats. All right, boys, let's get settled. All right, gentlemen, this is it. This is what we're looking for. Now, this $20 note has had quite a history. We've been opponents for a long time. Now, a lasting association creates a certain amount of familiarity, so I've come to refer to our little friend here as Willie, if you'll forgive the sentiment. <laughs> All right, Parker. This gentleman is Willie's birth certificate. His father was a German named Emil Reinhardt. All right, Parker. His mother was a set of hand engraved steel plates, the most perfect ever made outside of the US Mint. This gentleman is Willie. Looks pretty good for a phony, doesn't he? As you'll notice, the Treasury and Federal seals Check letter, faceplate number, serial number are beautifully made. Portrait, scroll work is amazingly reproduced. In most cases, the paper is 24 pound, all rag content, very close to that used in genuine bills. The major flaw, of course, is the absence of colored fibers in the paper pulp. Now, one way to recognize Willie is through the serial number. You'll notice it contains Daddy's signature. R for Reinhardt. One, three, two. And those three digits have never been changed. One, three, two. Remember them. All right, Parker, lights. Now, Reinhardt returned to Europe with the plates, and they disappeared along with it. Most of the other men involved were rounded up, and the bill stopped appearing. That was in 1939. But now, gentlemen, Willie is back. He's turning up in England, on the continent. It's very embarrassing for Uncle Sam. Now, Analytical tests for watermarks show that the paper comes from a West Coast mill here in the States. Ink is also local, so we are assuming that Willie is being printed right here in this area and exported. All we have to do is find out where and by whom. Right. The paper was made by the Kirby Mills, Seattle, Washington. According to the amounts purchased, we've narrowed the possibilities down to 57 local consumers. The list is divided into five groups. Parker, Clinton, Harris, Schwartz, and Reddy. You'll each take a group. We want to know the disposition of every sheet of that stuff. Conroy? Yeah, Alec. I want your customs boys to find out which of those firms are doing an export business. All right. All right. That's it, gentlemen. Thank you. Well, they're off and running. Yeah. Why don't you go home and get some rest? Okay, think I will. Good night. Good night. Have a nice trip? Yeah, it was all right. Oh, no thanks. Well, that should give you an idea of what we're trying to do. Well, I don't see where I fit in. Harry Craven was married. Oh, was he? 
Mrs. Craven lives here in Hollywood. First name is Maria. She might be the key to a lot of doors we'd like to open. That's your job. Well, what am I supposed to do? Well, you tell her that you were her husband's closest friend. Pay your respect, extend your sympathy, learn whatever you can about her, and let me know what you find out. Okay. All right, here's his file. Records, personal stuff in this envelope. Well, you might take something of his along, in case she doesn't think her husband had any friends. Anything else? Yeah. Watch yourself. Mrs. Harry Craven. I'm Mrs. Craven. I was a friend of Harry's. Oh, please, won't you come in? Thank you. I was just about to leave, but... Well, perhaps I'd better come back another time. Oh, no, that's all right. See, I would have called, but I couldn't find your number in the book. I understand. Uh, Mr... Salvo, John Salvo. Mr. Salvo, this is Don Kastner. Mr. Salvo was a friend of Harry's, Don. How do you do? Hi. Mr. Kasten is a family friend. Well, I was hoping I'd get a chance to talk to you alone. Well, Mrs. Craven just told you I was a friend of the family. That's very nice. Well, maybe another time. Was it anything important? It might be. You're impolite, Mr. Salvo. Uh, Mr. Salvo, I'd like very much to talk to you, but for the moment, please forgive me. I'm a little upset over Harry and everything. I understand. I'm staying at the Fontana Hotel. Oh. I forgot. I, I thought you might like to have this. It's very kind of you. Thank you. It's all right. Good night. Good night. I've had this since I was 12 years old. Harry used to like to wear it. He said as long as he had no religion in his soul, it wouldn't hurt to have a little around his neck. Who is this Salvo? I don't know. I've never seen him before. Maria, you ought to be more careful. Strange guy barges in, you don't know anything about him. Don, he went to a lot of trouble. I just want you to be careful. I worry. I wish you wouldn't. You ought to listen to me more. It's tough trying to take care of you when you don't do what I tell you. I'll get my coat. Yeah. Oh, hello, Mrs. Craven. No, you didn't wake me. Well, certainly I can meet you now. Just give me a few minutes. Goodbye. I want to apologize for Don. He's not usually disagreeable. You didn't have to come all the way down here for that. I didn't, not entirely. I want to know about Harry, Mr. Salvo. Call me Johnny. All right, Johnny. What do you want to know? Whatever you can tell me, really. The War Department just advised me that he was dead. What was he doing, Johnny? You know more about that than I would. <laughs> why would I? Well, wives always know what a husband's going to do before he does it. <laughs> Maybe that's true after a very long time. Harry and I met last March. 
He was on furlough. Got married in May before he went overseas. By January, I, I was a widow. Were you and Harry close? Two cells apart. Oh. Yeah, we wound up paroled into the same outfit. I didn't know that. Look, if it makes any difference, I can get out now. <laughs> Let's both get out. It's just amazing how all that's built up. You know, I used to play down there when I was a kid. It was a big, empty lot. I was quite a tomboy. You could have fooled me. <laughs> I was, really. Spent more time down there than I did at home. Do you have any family, Johnny? Oh, some. Tell me about them. Oh, we're a pretty dull group. <laughs> a large dull group or a small dull group? Oh, about average. I have an uncle who's a doctor, a cousin who's a letter carrier, aunt who pickles beets. <laughs> about average. Mother? Dead. What about your father? I thought you wanted to talk about Harry. Were you... Were you with him when it happened, Johnny? No. Look, do you... Do you have a job now? Do you work? Mm-hmm. I have a job, receptionist. Where? <laughs> At an importer's, Borman Limited. Don got it for me. He likes you a lot, doesn't he? Well, he was Harry's friend, and... When I got the wire from the war department, he was sympathetic and understanding. And I was very grateful. Being grateful can lead to other things. Getting pretty late. I have to get up early. Look, can I see you again? All right. I like talking to you, Johnny. It's the lot, $2,500. What's the story? Oh. Oh, come in, Johnny. This is Bill McCready from Immigration, and he's working with us. Special employee John Salvo. How do you do? Hi. Sit down, Johnny. Go on, McCready. Well, their name is Polensky. They arrived in New York nine days ago on the Queen Elizabeth, and they live with a relative here in Los Angeles. And at 10.43 a.m., they made a deposit at the uh, Mercantile Bank. The teller spotted the bills were counterfeit and called us. So I picked them up and brought them here. All right, ask them to come in. Would you come in, please? Mr. and Miss Polensky, this is Mr. Conrad. How do you do? Won't you sit down, please? Now, uh, don't be frightened, Mr. Polensky. Have you broken some law? No. Must we go back? No, of course not. We just want to find out where you got these bills. London. But where in London? Can you be more specific? It was not far from our house. We were given rooms by the Intergovernment Committee. Check with the ICEM in London. Find out where these people stayed before they sailed. Okay. Do you remember who it was that gave you the money? He was a stranger who, who wanted to help us. He was a nice man. Yeah. Did you ever hear a man named Reinhardt? Emil Reinhardt? No. I don't know him. Well, I'm afraid you've lost $2,500. Lost? You mean my money is no good? I'm afraid not. The so-called American money that was given you is counterfeit.
No good. May we go now? Yes, of course. I'm terribly sorry. I wish I could replace it for you. Thank you. I'm sorry they gave you trouble. What a setup. Heading it to DP. They can flood the whole world with this junk. Well, Johnny, how about Mrs. Craven? Well, I saw her. And? Well, nothing. She was married to this guy for nine months, and in six months he was overseas. I don't even think she knows anything about him. Now, what made you decide that? Well, we talked. You must have said something to lead you to think that she was completely ignorant of her husband's affair? Oh, nothing. She only lived with him three months. What does she look like? She's young, blonde, medium height. Pretty? Yeah, if you like the type. Look, look, what are you pushing for? I said, I don't think she knows anything. What does she do? Well, she works downtown as a receptionist for an importer's firm. She live alone? Yeah. She alone at the time? No, there was a fellow there named Kastner, uh, Don Kastner. Yeah, what does he do? I don't know what he does. Look, I'm not a cop. I just did the best I could. Take it easy, Johnny. I didn't expect you to get everything the first shot. I was only asking. All right, okay. You know, it'll be better when we talk. You have to sooner or later. Well, let's just forget about it, huh? There's a lot I wanted to say to you. You came to the prison three times. Why wouldn't you see me? What difference does that make now? It makes all the difference now. I want to see you. I wanted you to know that. When your mother died, I came up. You were always a little late, weren't you? You must be a lousy cop. Now, take it easy, Johnny. Then why don't you leave me alone? I said I'd work on this case, but I don't want anything to do with you. Now, look. Everyone pays for their own mistakes. Now, you've got a chance to pay off in full. Why don't you give me the same kind of a break? I, uh... Bust something up? No, no. Come in, Moray. Come in. What have we got? We've eliminated 20 of the 57 concerns we've covered. The remaining 37 firms that have bought 24-pound rag in appreciable amounts, we've divided into two major groups. There's 14 retail paper goods and stationery firms, and 23 private business concerns that print their own stationery. I'll show you how we got them spotted. The boys are making like mill representatives with large bargains and all rag content paper. They're working in three teams. Parker and Clinton are here. Harris and Redding are here. Schwartz is working alone. He's here. Now all we have to find out is who's anxious to buy. This just came in from the ICEM office in London. The Polanskis lived here with 15 other DPs. What's that, egg salad? Yeah, help yourself. 32 London Wall. Mm -hmm. I checked with the CID at Scotland Yard. It's a pretty rough neighborhood. Sort of a combination slum, garment center, warehouse district. A lot of DPs live around there. Uh, they've got nothing specific, but they'll keep their eyes open. Listen, I, th I think I know that name, that London Wall. Where'd you hear it? I don't know, something you said before. Well, I said the Polanskis lived there. No, no, something about, about the neighborhood. Oh, you mean it was a slum? Uh, garment center? Yeah, that's it, a garment center. Something to do with Maria Craven? Oh, no, something to do with Harry Craven. Uh -huh. Here it is, a tailor's receipt. Crystal Woolens, 25, London Wall. Hmm? Might be something. Have them check it out. Who they buy from, who they sell to, the works. Okay. Yeah? Okay, go ahead. Clinton. Oh, Johnny. Thanks for the memory. The address in London, it's worth looking into. Maybe just a coincidence. Well, maybe, but thanks anyway for remembering. That's okay. Well, uh, Clinton's got nothing. Maybe we'll get lucky with Harris or Schwartz. It's also possible that Johnny's uncovered something. Yeah. I'm not doing too well with him, am I? What do you mean? I mean Johnny. I'm not getting through to him. Well, he isn't easy. He's got a chip in his shoulder the size of the world. 
Don't blame him, but I can't change what's happened before. All I want to do is set things right now. What am I doing this wrong? Look, Alec. It isn't my place to interfere. Maury, come on. Tell me what you think. What's the matter with my wanting Johnny to know how I feel? Maybe you're being just a little too concerned with how you feel. Maybe he doesn't want what you want. What am I supposed to do, forget about him? No. But why don't you try letting him come to you? Instead of trying to reel him in like a fish. You've pulled him into something he isn't equipped to handle. You're taking a chance on paying a big price for your own peace of mind. Well, I... I told you I didn't want to get started. Maria querida, I... Maria querida, I haven't seen you in over a week. Have you been sick? Oh, no, I'm fine. Mama Gomez, this is Johnny. Johnny Salvo. Hello, Mama Gomez. Welcome, Johnny Salvo. Come and sit down. Aquí. I hope you are hungry. We are lucky tonight. Esteban was inspired. Albondiga soup. Oh, that sounds wonderful. I'll tell you what, we'll leave it up to him. That's all right with you. Three cheers for Esteban. Good. I'll get you some wine. You sit, eat, relax, and we'll talk later. Okay? Okay. Okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you. You come here often? Since I was a little girl. In fact, this is where Harry and I first met. Mama's husband introduced us. Oh, Esteban? Mm -mm. Esteban's a chef. Her husband's over there at the bar. That's Papa Gomez? No. No, Papa Gomez died before the war. That's Milo. Mama married him two years ago. Uh-oh, here he comes. Maria, lovely flower, how are you? Fine, Milo. With your permission. Ah, it's always good to see you, Maria. I don't believe I've met your friend. This is Johnny Salvo. How do you do? I'm Papa Gomez, new regime. Congratulations. Thank you. Have you ordered dinner yet? Oh, yes, Mama ordered for us. Ah, of course, Mama. Wonderful woman. Doesn't drink, smoke, or swear. Wonderful woman. What sort of business are you in, Mr. Salvo? Oh, a little bit of everything. Jack of all trades, huh? Man after my own heart. Do nothing well, but do a little bit of everything. That way no one makes demands on you and you're welcome in all company. Excuse me. It's not the food, it's the wine. So he drinks it all, then no one else will have to suffer. Did you ever see such a sense of humor? Uh, it is impossible for a man to fail with such a woman at his side. I'll bring your wine out to the patio. It's cooler. Oh, that'll be fine, Mama. Excuse us, please. It was nice to have met you. How many times have I told you to stay away from the customers? People just sort of come along. I know Mom was pretty lonesome when Papa Gomez died. I suppose everyone needs someone or something to love and hold on to. Well, how about holding on to me for a while? All right. What are you thinking about? Oh, I was just wondering about you and Harry. You know something, Johnny? You know what? You remind me of Harry a little. Well, that's good. I must be growing on you, huh? It's your eyes. They're like his. It's the smog. It does it to everybody. Uh, no. Smog just makes them red. Yours are lonely eyes, Johnny. Do you know you've got lonely eyes? No, I never noticed. They are. No bottoms. Just 
very deep. Dinner is getting cold. Johnny Salvo, Beat it, lover boy. Just go away. Far, far away. Mr. Salva doesn't answer. Well, keep ringing. here. All about eight guys with steam shovels. Don't oh, clown. Tell me. That's what it felt like. It's yours? No. Oh. I guess he wanted me to go a long ways. Who wanted what? What are you talking about? Personal beef has nothing to do with you. Look, Johnny, I want to know everything that happened. He was waiting for me when I came home. Who? Who was waiting? Don Kastner. He's got his hooks into Maria Craven. He doesn't want anyone else hanging around her. I'll call a doctor. I don't need a doctor. I'm all right. How much does Kastner know about you? Nothing. How can you be sure? I'm alive, aren't I? Maybe you're just lucky. Look, this was your idea, not mine. Remember that. Why well, do you want to quit? 
No, I don't want to quit. Except like a man, you said, huh? All right. You just stick to your end of the bargain. I'll take care of mine. You're sure there's nothing I can do for you? Not a thing. Look, Johnny. I didn't want you to get hurt. I wanted to see you again and try and make up for things, but I didn't want you to get hurt. Good night, Johnny. Yeah, go ahead. Morning, Maury. Hi. Have some coffee? Okay. So. Thanks. What have you got? CID report, Bristol Woolen. Anything? Oh, it's legitimate enough. Wholesale, retail. Here's a list of firms that import their stuff locally, about seven. Good. I'm sorry about shooting my mouth off last night, Alec. Forget it. I asked you, didn't I? Yeah. Go ahead. That's right, Kastner. K-S-T-N-E-R. Did you get anything? Nothing, huh? All right, thanks. Who's that? Records and identifications. A fellow named Don Kastner gave Johnny some trouble last night. Hi, fellas. Good well, morning, Phil. Well, Phil, how'd you make out? I checked out most of the places on the list, nothing. Then I hit a couple of spots that were interested if I'd get them a deal on the paper. One is a fancy schmancy dress house. They have a litho set up to print their own stationery. The second place wanted to know how long I've been with the local office at Kirby Mills. I told them just a short time that my usual territory was Kansas. <laughs> anyway, they used a lot of paper. They were very interested. I quoted them a rock bottom price and they gave me an order. What a commission. Well, it could be something. What kind of a place? Woolens. What's the name? Uh, Philip Borman Limited. It's here. Okay, let's find out all about Mr. Philip Borman, everything there is to know. Maury, have customs find every export ship by Mr. Borman during the past year. Okay. Phil, I want you to get hold of some of that paper. You're going to make a delivery. What a commission. Good morning, Don. Good morning. I called you last night. I went out for a while. I called you at one in the morning. I didn't realize it was that late. I just went to a movie. You went to the Gomez place. Don, you have no I told you. I worried. Johnny. Good morning. What happened to your face? I was in the neighborhood. I thought I'd drop in for a while. You remember Don? Oh, sure. I remember Don. Hello, Salvo. As a matter of fact, Kastner, I'm glad you're here. I have something for you. Let's see, I spent $2 for the cab. I appreciate your offer, Don, but I'm going to stay around for a while. Johnny! Have you lost your mind? He knows why. And perhaps you'd be good enough to explain it to me. I think you'd better look after him. Of course, Mr. Borman. Well, who are you? What's this all about? Well, my name is John Salvo. What are you, some sort of juvenile delinquent? You have the wrong idea, Mr. Bowman. Look, I'm out of the Army about a week. This buddy of mine, Harry Craven, was killed in Germany, so when I came back to the States, I thought I'd pay my respects to Mrs. Craven. I took her out to dinner, and for that, I got punched around. By Mr. Kastner? And a few friends. Did you report this incident to the police? No. Why not? Well, I'm, uh, I'm paroled into the Army, Mr. Bowman. I have to stay out of trouble. Oh, I see. Well, I suggest we call it an unfortunate misunderstanding and forget the whole thing. That's okay with me. May I offer you a drink? No, thanks. Buddy, 
Don't turn around. You're being tail Johnny boy. Average height, light complected, dark suit. My dope. Don't do that. Be careful, don't go upstairs. Thanks, fella. Foreman's the boy we're after. Can you see that? Well, so what? So it's a good bet that Maria Craven is mixed up in it, too. You can't be sure of that. We'll play the percentage. Well, you can't arrest anybody on a percentage. I can't arrest anyone yet. Not till I catch Borman with the plates in his fists and his pockets full of willies. But I will. Meantime, as far as I'm concerned, the girl is part of the package. Mr. Conrad, yeah. there's a call for you. Thank you. Yeah. It's Swartz. Yeah, Phil. I tracked the guy who was following Johnny. Straight to Borman's like a homing pigeon. I think they got our boy spotted. Uh-huh. All right, thanks, Bill. Now, Johnny, that's it. You went right back to Borman. That means he's sitting on your tail. He'll be watching you every minute. You'll have to stay away from there. You'll stay away from here, too. Your job is finished, Johnny. Look, why don't you let me You're talk? You're free. You're free to go anywhere you like with a clean record. That should be worth everything to you. Of course, uh, I'll wonder where you are and see you now and then. At least hear from you. Look, I asked you for a favor once. And I'm going to ask you for another one right now. Just let me find out about Maria Craven in my own way. No, Johnny, there's nothing you can do. I'm not so sure I about that. I told you I didn't want you to get hurt. It's not worth taking a chance. Well, you said I was free, didn't you? Free to go where I want and do what I want? With one exception. You stay out of this case. Well, you pulled me into it. I'm pulling you out of it. I'm notifying the Army that your assignment here is finished. into the federal probation office? I was right behind him. He knew Harry Craven, that much is apparent. I wonder how much he knew. Yes? Cable just came, Mr. Borman. Oh, thank you. Make it dry. Bristol Woolens has just confirmed their error in their last shipment. Would you prepare a drawback application? Yes, sir. Oh, um, don't feel badly about what happened this morning with that young man. Well, I am sorry about that, Mr. Borman. Well, you should be flattered. Do you know him well? No, not too well. Was he able to tell you anything of these circumstances? About your husband, I mean. No, nothing at all. I guess it's just as well. Well, thank you. Well, the way I got it figured, the truck will deliver the paper to Borman in the morning, and I'll just sit it out. When they move the paper, I'll be right behind them. Good enough. Alec, we may have hit on something. Well, let's have it. I've checked on all the dutiable entry sheets covering every shipment imported by Philip Borman Limited in the last year. There's no export record at all. Nothing. Not so much as a pen wiper. But there is just one thing. Here are all the entry statements. Seven shipments in nine months. 
Well, what about him? Take a look at this stamp. Consumed by DE entry. What's a DE entry? Man? That's a drawback entry. Whenever a shipment contains merchandise that wasn't ordered by the importer, he applies for a drawback entry. He gets a letter confirming the error from the exporter and then ships the stuff on back to him. Ships it back? Then he follows the same operations as if he were exporting. Right. There's one drawback entry to Bristol Woolens. Bristol Woolens. Did we check them out? Yeah. Scotland Yard says they're clean. Why return shipments examined by customs? Well, they're checked by an appraiser to make sure the same material's going back. Do you think they could be loading the return shipments? Well, it's possible. A bundle of cloth full of money. Well, I don't know. Why not? Well, it isn't much, but you said to check everything, Alec. It won't hurt. Here's the last shipment received from Bristol a few weeks ago. All right, have customs watch for any more drawback entries, and if they come in, hold them. Thanks, Pomeroy. Maybe we got something. Staff Sergeant John Salvo. That's right. Reassignment orders. Where are they going to reassign me? I have the Department of Army, buddy. I just deliver messages. Good luck. Thanks. Foreman had a lot of last-minute things for me to do. I waited. I thought we could have some dinner. Not tonight, Don, please. I'd really like to go home. I want to talk to you, Maria. Can't we talk tomorrow? I want to talk to you tonight. You going to see Salvo? Please, Don. You're forgetting a lot of things, aren't you, Maria? A lot of plans we made. But they were your plans, not mine. They were for us. Everything was for you and me. I was only waiting for the time when we could get out of here together. You took all these things for granted, Don. I never said I'd go with Don't you. Don't walk away from me. I told you I had to decide things for myself. Then decide for yourself. Don't go to Salvo. Don, please promise me you won't go near him again. I won't have to. If you don't, don't walk out on me, Maria. I'll kill you both if you do. He seemed almost insane. I, I was afraid to go home. Johnny, I'm really afraid of him. What can I do? Why is he getting so panicky all of a sudden? I don't know. Are you sure? Why should I know? You worked with him a long time. Well, he helped me. I had no place else to go. I don't like being alone, Johnny. I never have. You'd be better off alone than mixed up with Castor and Borman. What has Mr. Borman got to do with it? Look, Maria, are you being honest with me? Johnny, I swear to you, I don't know what you're talking about. What am I supposed to tell you? Everything you know about Borman and Kastner and a sweet little counterfeiting setup that's spreading phony money all over Europe. Your husband, Harry, was part of it. He was killed, I think, because he knew too much. Johnny, who are you? I, I never lied to you, Maria. I was in the army with Harry. I just never told you that I'm still in the army. That's all. I don't understand all this, Johnny. How do you know all these things? Who told you? The Treasury Department thinks you're mixed up in this. I knew Harry, so... But they brought me back here to find out about you. I see. And you think I'm part of this... this sweet little setup? I just had a feeling Harry's death was no accident, but I certainly never dreamed it was anything like this. I didn't, Johnny. And I never lied to you either. I never lied to you once. Look, this wasn't my idea. I didn't want any part of it. I served my term. I just wanted to forget about the past. They brought me into it. They said if I'd help them, they'd fix it so no one would ever know I was in prison. And I said, all right. And then I met you. For the first time in my life, I felt good about something. I never felt good about anyone before. That's 
why I had to know the truth. Don't you understand, Johnny? I've told you everything. There's nothing else to tell. But you can't believe that, can you? Maria. Maria, I believe you. Look, I'm, I'm going away tomorrow night. I'm being reassigned. Where will you be going? I don't know. Someplace in Europe. It's an awfully long way. Would you come with me? Why, Johnny? Because I love you, Maria. Oh, Johnny. I never had any faith in anyone before. You'll have to help me. You want me to? If you really want me to, Johnny. One three oh nine to central control. One three oh nine to central control. Control one, go ahead. Suspect parked behind restaurant on Overa Street. Request assistance. One three oh nine is parked southwest corner, first and main. Control one to one three oh nine. Assistance on the way.
Hi, Phil. What's up, Phil? Nothing yet. He hasn't unloaded any of those cartons of paper yet. So he's either got to make another stop or somebody's got to pick the stuff up. I figured I'd better have some company in case I had to be in two places at once. You guys had anything to eat? Yeah, you called us in the middle of lunch. I'm starved. Why don't you eat? I can't. My stomach's on the bum. Take one of your pills. Not supposed to until after I eat. Oh. Condition red, fellas. Could be a customer. Be it. Hello, Joe. Hiya, Papa. Truck's fan tail. Harris, you stay here. I want to get a look at what's inside those boxes. I'm on my way. Schwartz, Treasury Department. I want to talk to you, Mr. Gomez, about where you do your business. Box is loaded with this stuff. Pretty neat. Pack it nice with shrimp, ship it from the border. Yeah, it's really all right. How's Phil? Lucky. He's going to be okay. He just got a buzz from Central Control. Redding's about 10 miles south of Laguna Beach. That truck's really rolling. The highway patrol will pick him up in San Diego and go on to Chula Vista with him. Okay, good. Harris, you stay here and take care of this stuff, and come on, let's pick up one.
Come on, Borman. The firm's twice your size. Don't use half the stationery you use. So what do you do with it? I can't be specific as to the dispensation of every single sheet. I can. You ship it south to be used in the manufacture of these bills. I am a woolens importer, Mr. Conrad. I do not ship paper, nor do I know anything about counterfeit money. A load of that paper was delivered to your warehouse this afternoon. A man named Milo picked it up and gave it to the driver of a truck heading south toward the border. Well, if this man Milo stole paper from my warehouse, I fail to see how I can be held accountable. One of our agents saw the truck driver give Milo a load of frozen shrimp containing this money. You don't know anything about that, either. Not a thing. That agent was almost killed this afternoon, Mr. Borman. And I'm going to hang it on you. That and the murder of Harry Craven. These are reckless and unsupported charges, Mr. Conrad. I'd be careful if I were you. I've been careful, Borman. I've been careful for 15 years to catch the loss behind this operation. And nothing's going to give me greater pleasure than what you choked to death in the gas chamber. Now, just a minute, Conrad. There isn't one shred of evidence to connect me with any of these things. Take him downstairs and knock him out. I hate to say it, Alec, but I don't think we can hold him. Every indication points toward Borman as the head man. Indications aren't enough. You know that as well as I do. He's got an argument for every one of them. It's impossible that after all this time we've got him and yet we haven't got him. Where's Kastner? We'll pick him up, but we got nothing on him either. We found the money. Sure. In a Spanish restaurant that Philip Borman says he's never heard of. I know, I know. And even if we find the plates, we can't tie it to him. Yeah? Alec, the appraiser's store, the one on Alameda. They're on the phone. Hello? Go ahead. Uh-huh. Thank you. Borman's drawback entry. They've got it. Get Borman. Bring him along. Entry sheet lists 22 bolts all together. Looks okay. It's all the same material. Here it is. Here's your entry sheet. That's fine. Thank you very much. How does the weight check out? Right on the nose. Now, an importer must sign the drawback application swearing as to the contents of the shipment to be returned. Is that your signature? I suppose it is. You know it is, Borman. Come on. It wouldn't be hard to prove. And if it is my signature, what then? Well, suppose we find out. All right, boys, pull that bolt apart. Yeah, let me show you how this works. Now, let's get it up. Come on, Henry. Let me handle you. Let's go. Something's funny. I measured a couple of these bolts. The entry sheet lists the yardage at 75 yards on each bolt. So? These two are short, six yards apiece. Well, what about it? Well, if the yardage is short, there ought to be a difference in the weight on the original entry sheet. Something supplying that extra weight. But where is it? We've ripped every bolt apart and there isn't... calling from Chula Vista. Well, it's all over. They've got everything. Press, plates, the works. The truck led them right to it. Redding's taking the plane back. You know, they were printing the stuff in the basement of a shrimp packing plant. How do you like that? That's pretty clever. Thanks, Ben. Okay. Boys did a good job. Yeah? 
wonder how Swartz is. I figured I'd take a run over to the hospital. Good, good. Then I'll be over later. I better stick around here until everything's cleaned up. You heard from Johnny? No, I didn't expect to. He gets his reassignment orders today. Yeah, I know. You gonna see him before he leaves? No. You should, after sticking your neck out to bring him back here. I only brought him here to work on this case. You say so. Oh, there's an all points out on Kastner. You want to see the Craven girl, too? The Craven girl, too. I'll see you, Alec. What do you mean, gone? When will she be back? She didn't say. She left town. Where'd she go? I don't know. But wherever it was, she certainly seemed to be in a hurry to get there. How long ago did she leave? Oh, I should judge not more than an hour ago. You're welcome. I'm sorry I took so long packing. It's all right. Mm, you look pretty. I'll be right back. Have you got a bus schedule? Uh, where to? San Diego. I think so. There you are. Thank you. You ready? I'm ready. John Salvo, please. Uh, John Sa Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Mr. Salvo's checked out. Oh. Well, thanks anyway. Uh, you may still be able to catch him, though. Catch him where? They went down to the bus station. Going to San Diego, I think. They? Was someone with him? A young lady. They left about five minutes ago. The bus station is right down the street. All right. Thanks. Two one-way tickets to San Diego. Yes, sir. 516. Okay. Well, which gate does the bus leave from? Main gate, right across. You have about five minutes before the bus leaves. Thanks. Let's go.
get over here. You're going to get lost. You're going to miss the bus. Can I help you, sir? No. Bus now leaving for San Diego at the main gate and point south. Wait a minute. Take care of him. Hey, Johnny? Yeah. Yeah, how about you? Oh, nothing serious. Maria, this is my father. I know, John. I told her. Hope you don't mind. Well, you two ready? What for? We have a little business with Mrs. Craven. Well, look, I told you, you're making a mistake. No, Johnny, it's all right, please. Well, it isn't all right. You can both come to the office. She'll answer a few questions. Then she'll be released officially. Johnny, we caught Emil Reinhardt with the plates in Chula Vista. Thanks for everything. Now, what are you looking so worried about? You've got seven days, haven't you? The buses leave every three hours, don't they? Come on. Father seems like such a nice man, Johnny. Yeah. Yeah, you might be right. Mm -hmm. 